just to give you a sense of how bad things can really get in a household just to, with these things going on. So let me, I'm, I'm just going to share with you the, this little vignette. So a couple weeks back, uh, Deb thought that she would get us uh, some foodstuffs that we could use in an emergency. So this is what she bought. And this is a uh, veggie, vegetable mix. Okay, and it's, uh, it's by It's Delish. I don't know where it came from. I suspect it might have come from India. But anyway, it's, it's dehydrated vegetables. And so, you know, I thought that was a good idea, preparing for the future, right? So last night, um, she decided that she was going to put this on spaghetti as a as a little addition to our spaghetti. <laughs> and um, so it was a perfectly nice evening, beautiful spaghetti dinner with the vegetable mix mixed into it. And um, so, you know, I had, I actually had a second helping. And of course, Deb is always uh, criticizing me for overeating, okay? And, uh, and last night I had uh, three glasses of wine, so that's more than I usually have. So I got accused later on, not right at dinner, but of over drinking too. And so, <laughs> so uh, we had the dinner and then I went and, and finished off the plate. And then um, we sat down and started to watch television. And about an hour later, Deb, came out with um, with some pie that we had left over and served pie. Okay, so we had the pie. <laughs> and, um, and so with the pie, I was drinking some water. And anyway, what happened next was that I as soon as I started to eat the pie and took a glass of water, I started to feel bad. So I'm having my pie and drinking this water. And suddenly I'm, I'm just, I'm instantly not feeling good. And I've had pieces of the, the, this pie before. So I think I'm okay, but it's getting more and more painful. I'm starting to wonder if I'm having a heart attack. And then all of a sudden, I just had to run to the bathroom. So I made it to the toilet, heaved it, heaved, and I thought I was clear. I started to clean up some mess, got everything under control. Debbie starts to beat me up for overeating and for over drinking. Okay, so, so she says, <laughs> Here I am with the with the toilet, right? I've been to the toilet once. I'm still hugging it, and I had I had eaten these dehydrated vegetables on spaghetti. This is Deb got these dehydrated vegetables for us uh, at, right. so, to assure that we would have nutrition in the in the event of some crisis, and. Uh, Right. which, which uh, in principle was a great idea. So Debbie's been whipping up on me because I, she said I overate or I drank too much wine. And that must be why, why I'm having this problem as I'm hugging the toilet. But anyway, I got control of that <laughs> and uh, sort of got the little mess in the bathroom cleaned up and went back out to watch television again and I'm sitting there and all of a sudden um, gaboom I had another uh, rush to the toilet except this time I didn't make it and uh, so and it just exploded out of me so I feel pretty strongly that it was uh, it was these uh, dehydrated vegetables <laughs> that, that uh, uh, got the best of me and 
when I had my dessert, I drank water and, and that rehydrated them and they went from <laughs> Yeah, well, so what's the moral of the story here? Well, the moral of the story is that we have to be kind to our loved ones, okay? That's the basic moral of the story because you haven't heard anything yet. That's only what happened last night, okay? Um, but after the second trip to the toilet, and again, I'm being criticized for overeating and too much wine. Um, it must be her, her anxiety. Yeah, I mean, I, obviously she's trying to deal with it. Usually I wash the dishes in the evening. And, but last night I wasn't feeling that well. And so the dishes were still in the sink and I said, well, okay, at least I'm going to prepare the coffee for um, tomorrow so that Deb will only just have to hit the button on the coffee maker the next morning. There, there was stuff in the sink, so I could only get eight cups into the, into the uh, pot. So I put the eight cups of water into the pot, right? Then... I wanted to put four more cups in. So I filled the pot up to four again, and I just pour that into the coffee maker. And what happened was the coffee maker is immediately overflowing uh, because when you put 12 cups from the coffee pot into the coffee maker, it's a little bit too much. Okay. And, and so there's these two little holes on the back and, and the thing is, uh, is spewing water all over the counter. So I said, oh, my God. So I have to pick up the thing, pour, pour out some water out from the, I have water everywhere. And I still have the dishes in the, in the thing. And I put down the coffee pot. So finally, I cleaned up all the water. Deb had gone to bed. And um, I cleaned up all the water, got it leveled out in the pot. And I was exhausted. Deb had gone to bed. I decided, well, okay, I, I've made the coffee now. I put the grounds in. I put the water in. I'm going to go to bed. I'll take care of the dishes in the morning. So who knows, out of my description so far, what I did wrong. You didn't do the dishes. Well, I didn't do the dishes, but, I knew, but that wasn't the, the wrong thing. Okay, so anyway, so this morning, <laughs> this morning I wake up and I had, a, I had a little dream in the morning, which I rather liked, and I decided that I was going to um, uh, write this down in my dream book. So I sat down at the dining room table and I'm writing this dream out, but I had hit the coffee maker so it would go on and start to brew the coffee, right? But I, I just sort of half awake, my hair is still crazy, before I wrote, I went in and I hit the coffee maker and I went back and sat at the table and started writing. So about 20 minutes later, Debbie comes out of the bedroom and I hear her say, oh no, no, no. <laughs> and she says, what did you do with the coffee maker? And here's there's 12 cups of coffee on the floor of the kitchen. <laughs> and, and, uh, and so, um, so anyway, 12 cups of coffee on the floor, grounds all over the kitchen counter and every place. I have, to, I have two joint replacements, so I'm down on the floor, 73-year-old man trying to clean this thing up, uh, and it was a mess, and we, so anyway, make a long story short, we finally got that cleaned up, and then Debbie says, well, this coffee maker is ruined now. You're going to have to get a, we're going to have to get a new one. And of course we can't go, go next door and buy one. So we have to order it on Amazon. So I said, okay, uh, if it's ruined, I'll go buy another coffee maker. So then I went to the computer and I ordered a coffee maker exactly like the one we had. And they say, oh, you're going to get it between April 8th and April 20th. And I said, oh, no. Okay, so we're not going to have coffee for several days. 
<laughs> so this is all because of this, right? So we're not going to have coffee for several days. And so then I say, now, wait a minute. How can there be anything wrong with this coffee maker? All it does is heat water and make it go up through the little spout and through the coffee grounds. It must be okay. So I go back and I clean up the old coffee maker, which Debbie had said was gone. And I put new coffee in it, new water in it, hit the button. It's, there's nothing wrong with the coffee maker. There was only something wrong with me because I had failed to put the coffee pot under the coffee this morning. And so that is my story and I'm sticking to it. Uh, Debbie still thinks I, I overeat and I uh, drank too much wine last night, which I agree. I agree to both of those things. Well, there, it was a parallel process between you having some explosion and also the coffee pot exploding. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, a flooding of sorts between you, with you and this overflowing experience. Yeah, it was it, it was definitely an, and, it, it was definitely I an mean, inundation. <laughs> Go ahead, Kushbu. Yeah, yeah, and I feel this 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 rolls also is is matching the chain, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, this like they're exploding. They're exploding some words, and so there is certain kind of alignment like presence of this troll is making uh, right now and uh, mm. quite interesting mm. to hear this quite interesting to feel it i can yeah. feel it like it's a it's a chain of events it's, there's people coming and barging in it's not random it's the yeah. psychoid yeah mm. interesting yeah yeah that's right the psychoid element yeah. yeah, yeah, no doubt. I, I was definitely in the twilight zone during that period. And yeah, when I, when I do something like that, uh, they always say, Earth to Jerome, <laughs> you know, so it means I need to be grounded. So, yeah, but we are in such a stressful time here and our anxiety builds and we just need to think of ways to, uh, let go of that or at least steam and you've mentioned some ways like get involved with hobbies and different things right and uh, breathing and yoga and uh, things like that i found an interesting one that uh, people do if you're interested in hearing about it it was just a simple thing that these uh, the people uh, cognitive behavioral therapist uh, on some chat lines and uh, when they get people that are anxiety ridden and under stress, uh, what they do is the first thing is they do is they ask them to practice breathing. And so what they do is they take a belly breath. You know, some people breathe up here, but you want to do a belly breath and inhale for about three seconds and hold it like that with your belly coming out as right. you inhale. And then you exhale like that. Well, the same time you uh, inhale, you want to grab your fists. And so you want to go inhale for three seconds. And then like that and release the energy. But you also might want to put a word to it, such as ah. calm. Yeah. <laughs> I find that I find that really fascinating, uh, Jerome. Did yeah. um, just just I just want to check. Did you say that when you inhale, you let your belly go up, as in bigger? No. Yeah. Out. Yeah. So, bigger, right? Yeah. What What I want to say. Deep, deep breath, and your belly goes out. You hold it for three seconds. Close your fist, and then go. What was fascinating? <laughs> what's fascinating to me is that. Um, there was actually this breathing practice that um, I, I, I learned of um, some time back, but it was very specific. It was specific for dealing for when you had to deal with, um, there are certain kinds of people that just really drain your energy. 
and then the re like really negative people, right? And sometimes you're in situations where you just have to deal with them. But whatever the situation is, you can't just walk away, right? And the practice was actually just simply doing the breathing like you just mentioned. But the difference was that when you breathe in, you actually contract your belly inwards. So you actually actively um, pull in while breathing in. And the natural thing is, I mean, obviously for your body to um, expand when you breathe in because your lungs are expanding and, you know, the belly will go up like you were saying. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, so I just, I just find it interesting because uh, um, that was a practice um, that was, you know, basically dealing with when, um, when you're dealing with certain negative people that physiologically drain you. So it was, you know, to just hold your, hold your own and you know, not react, but to practice this breathing where, yeah, when you breathe instead of your belly going up, it, you actually contract it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why, I don't know what the reasoning is, but it's interesting. Yeah, there's all sorts of belly breathing exercises uh, and uh, Kundalini yoga is very violent because you, you, yep. you force your air out with your stomach like that back yeah. and forth and it, it's that's almost a violent uh, reaction i wouldn't recommend that unless yeah, you're talking you know. about the diaphragm area right i'm sorry what um you're you're um you're by belly you're talking about like around the diaphragm area yeah right yeah it's just yep, uh, yep. Yeah. the idea is to get some oxygen in there but don't overdo it or you'll hyper oxygenate <laughs> but, yeah yeah but uh, it, it causes your system to go into what they call the parasympathetic, uh, parasympathetic system. Uh, and that's yeah. how we relax and so forth. So if you feel yourself under stress, and they also uh, mentioned that it's okay to say, okay, I'm going to be stressful for now and feel it, and then do the exercise. So you can alternate it because we are feeling the stress. We just need to admit it and say, you know, I'm really stressed. I'm terrified about yeah. going to the grocery store. Right. You know, and, but then I need to get rid of that. Uh, so that's uh, just some things that I picked up. For